A series of videos is on how to use GTK with Glade to produce uh, graphical user interfaces for Linux, for GNOME-based Linux desktops. Uh, GTK stands for the GIMP Toolkit, sometimes referred to as just the Graphics Toolkit. It's written in C. It's mainly used with C, C++, languages like Perl, Python, and a few others. It consists of an uncountable number of subroutines and functions uh, that produce on-screen graphical widgets. Um, almost every, anything you're looking at in, on a GNOME desktop, and I'm on a GNOME desktop, has uh, probably been created by GTK. There are some uh, screenshots here, but they're not very handy. The GNOME desktop would be the example one. All of these buttons you see here, they're all from GTK. The slider is from GTK. Uh, the text editing in here is from GTK. Um, those buttons are GTK. Uh, so, you know, just about everything on a GNOME desktop is probably coming from uh, GTK. Not necessarily, but probably. Anyway, it's LGPL, which means anything you write can be incorporated into uh, for-profit software. So that's GTK. The problem with GTK is it's got an awful lot of functions and has an awful lot of code to get relatively simple things up on the screen, like a button. Uh, because you have to create the button, you have to position the button, you have to declare the button's characteristics, you have to have callbacks from the button so it ref come, talks back to your program. It's all relatively straightforward in one sense, but it's rather a nuisance um, to do it in reality. So that's where Glade comes from. Uh, Glade is a package which allows you to lay out a, an application, an application window, with all of these widgets placed in it. And it does a lot of the dirty work for you, all of the drudgery. It sets up where the widget's going to be, what color it's going to be, what size font it's going to have, and so forth and so on. Uh, so Glade is very handy. It can also be frustrating, too. Anyway, this is what the current version of Glade looks like. If you have an older version of Linux uh, and an older version of Glade, it may look different. In the older versions, on the left-hand side, there was a lot of buttons. They're not here anymore. This is the minimalist version. And I'm using the latest version of GTK, which is, I believe, 3.22, as it is with Glade here, 3.22.1. Uh, if you don't have uh, GTK, you will need to download it, and you'll need to download the development libraries. Remember, in Linux, there's usually two sets of libraries. There's the libraries used for runtime, and then there's the development libraries. The development libraries are used if you're going to um, actually create code, and they're the ones that are dash dev or dot dev in uh, Synaptic Package Manager. So you need development libraries across the board here. Uh, all right, so um, this is what the screen looks like, and I need to create a project and to do a simple example. And I go up here, and I click Create a New Project. Bingo. And what do we got? We've got on the left-hand side here will be a list of the widgets and who owns who, or who owns whom, I guess. Um, this is what the layout is going to look like. The central part is what your screen, your window, is going to look like, the one you're creating. And the right hand here is for parameters. Uh, for uh, things that control aspects of the window. You know, for example, what type font, how big the font, where something's going to be lay, uh, placed, and so, stuff like that. You'll see it in a moment. All right, we got nothing in here, so let's get started. First of all, we need a top level, and the typical top level is going to be a window. All right, and there's a window. It's nothing in it. If I were to actually go forward and try to print this on the uh, screen or display it on the screen, it would just be blank. It would have the borders and a title bar, but that's it. It's nothing else. I need a container inside the window. I need a container that can contain other items like buttons and sliders and things like that. So I go to containers. There are a lot of different ones. Um, I've not used most of them, but GTK Fixed is a good one because it's a fixed grid container. It's, it's, it's a grid. You can put other things in here. It's you've got nice ways of laying things out. Um, it's a simple grid work in which you can drop other stuff. Okay, so what's the most important thing? It's probably a button. Everything's got buttons. So I go to GTK button and I drag the button in. All right, there's a button. Now I should have been naming these things. I keep forgetting to do that. Um, this would be the ID. Glade is going to write out a file, and that file is going to be read in by your program. And your program will refer to the items in that file by name. And this is where you put the name. It's up here under ID. So I'm going to call. These are the names of the, of the items. I'm going to call the top-level window, window. You can call it fluffy if you want, but I'm calling it window. Okay, GTK fixed. 
I'm going to call that fixed uh, one. It's possible under certain circumstances I could have more than one fixed grid in a, a given project. Um, so fixed one. You'll notice here when I when I brought these things in, a lot of uh, stuff came in. These are um, signals and um, parameters, uh, settings, and so forth. Most of these are you just leave them alone, especially at the top level. You probably don't want to play with them, certainly not at this point. You notice fixed had a bunch of them too, um, Okay, which we're not really too worried. But getting down to button, we become more interested in what's going on over here. Well, I'm going to need to call out, um, give that a name too, and I'll call it button one. I've already written the code, so I better use the same names that I wrote uh, used in the code. All right, um, the contents of the button are down here. It says button, and there's the word button. And I'm going to change it to something like. Um, okay, uh, are you being served or something? May I help you? Okay, that's the content of the button. That's what will show up on the screen. There'll be a button with that text in it. It's a big button, but all right. Um, so we go next to where is the button going to appear? Well, this is the X and the Y of the button. You can't drag and drop it, but you can um, play with these guys um, up and down and so forth. Sometimes this gets a little erratic. If you mistype in here, you can end up with a button which is 3,000 pixels wide, in which case it looks weird, obviously. Um, just be careful when you're typing up here. You can... It tends to be somewhat sensitive to mistyping. All right, so that's the that, that's the position of the button. And under common, there's a whole again a whole lot of parameters, most of which you don't have to worry about. But down here at the bottom is width and height request. So if I uh, remove the width request, 100 pixels, I believe that is, nothing really changes because the text that's in there plus the mandatory uh, padding on either side. Um, is it, it is a hundred or greater? So nothing happened when I did. If I wanted to make it so go to hundred, let me start incrementing and see at what point it starts growing. So there it is, um, and it's shrinking. And uh, okay, that's less. So it's apparently by itself, it's about 118 um, pixels wide. So I'll just drop that and leave it um, at the default a sufficient size to hold the text. And again, it does have generous uh, padding on either side. There's a way of getting rid of that, but you probably don't want to because it creates other problems. The height request is the other thing. If I go, to, if I drop the height request, it goes to the minimum height necessary to hold the uh, text. I might want to enhance that a little bit. Um, uh, whoops, no, um, make it a little bit bigger, but okay, we'll leave it at 50. It, uh, you pick any number you want. Now I can decorate the button in a lot of different ways. Um, uh, where is it? It's over here. I could put uh, I could I could put um, icons in here. There's several ways of putting icons here under Add Custom Content. I'm not going to click them because I'll lose the text that's in there. I'll have to retype it. We'll get around to adding icons and so forth later. The standard stock button icons are not very good uh, to use because they um, they put text and icon. It makes the thing really big and chunky. Uh, all right, so I got a button. Anything else about the button? There's the location. There's the size. And then we're going to get to signals, but I'm not going to get to signals yet because what happens when somebody clicks the button? Something has to happen. Well, the way GTK works, and it's the way most of these window um, GUI managers work, is there's a, a GTK will be sitting there watching for events. Anytime you mouse over the window in question, mouse over an, a widget in the window, um, click a window, click a button, uh, right click, left click, scroll wheel, all sorts of things. These are these are uh, incidents. They're events, and it detects the event. And when it sees, for example, that you've clicked on that button, it GTK will look and see what subroutine or function has been defined to carry or to, to handle that click. Um, that's called a callback. GTK will call you back. You call GTK and GTK sits there humming. And when it sees something that you've asked for, it'll call you back. And these functions are called callback functions. And uh, so a click there will eventually, I haven't got there yet, but it will eventually do a callback to a function. The function will then do whatever it is you intended to be done, you know, by clicking that button. Okay, that was coffee. <coughs> Let's um, 
so what I would to make it really simple uh, when someone clicks the button I want something to show up on the screen so I'm gonna put a, grab a GTK label and put it down here and um, I need that extra click to get rid of the menu bar um, the label um, and it's kind of chunky so let's get rid of the height request let's make it a bit uh, bigger and you notice the window expands to fit, to hold things as necessary there's a way of telling giving it a larger default window size um, but the window will uh, will expand as necessary to, um, to to hold all the widgets okay so there it is um, if I go over here I can edit the attributes of the text in the label and these are the attributes uh, font description style weight variant uh, some of them underlined foreground color let's pick a foreground color um, let's go to bright red um, select you see it turned red and um, let's see let's go to um, font description uh, up here and you you've got a lot of possible uh, fonts that you can pick from some of these I've never heard of um, but um, let's just go to a sans bold italic and let's make it bigger see them down here I'm increasing the size of it and I'll say select you'll notice this thing got bigger uh, because the height of the of the text got larger and it uh, it changed the um, the parameters what's 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 for the um, automatically change the, the parameter okay um the height parameter you know it's not going to show up over here uh, because it's it's a, it's whatever the minimum height is but for that font size the minimum height is that whatever that happens to be you could explore by turning this on and then you know backing out until you got to the point where it didn't get any smaller and that would be where is it right about there that would tell you how high it is yeah there is it's around 35 but I'll just click it off and let it go to the default all right that's the um, I don't actually want anything in it there's the text up here that appears in it okay I don't want anything in it until I actually click the button so now it's empty I didn't give it a name here it should be label one okay label one anything else um, that's where it's located it's got uh, no, no text in there yet so it's actually going to be invisible on the screen until you click the button uh, packing common I don't see anything that we've left out you can give it an, a widget name and it doesn't it's irrelevant the the, the, the ID is the important thing um, signals uh, we're not going to really play any signals in the in here but uh, well what are signals anyway um, we go back to the button um, oh what there's one more thing that should be in here is tooltip um, if you mouse over it this will pop up um, uh, okay Th so if you mouse over it that'll pop up uh, that's tooltip all right uh, back to the button button can have a tooltip also um, okay so when you mouse over the button you notice the label went away because there's no text in the label and you're not going to see it if this is something in it so it's still there I mean if you click back up here on the left hand side it, it, it does it now okay click me is in there um, I don't know if I've left I uh, got the names up there anything else I've uh, done screwy that I've left off you always leave something out okay now we get to signals we're in the button okay these are the signals the most logical signal for a button is I've been clicked all right and there you see it clicked uh, and you need to give it the name of the function to call when it's been clicked so if I click here and to type here and I start typing all I have to do is type on and it pops up and says on underscore button one underscore clicked uh, that's the default name you can give it any name you want to but normally that's what they look like on space name of object or widget uh, space or excuse me uh, underscore clicked uh, you can you can pick different names but you know go with the default it's easier um, I have to click on that now you see it entered up here and I have to hit enter in order to make it uh, permanent don't forget to hit enter if you don't hit enter it won't go it, you didn't it didn't go in there and it's not there and the callback isn't hasn't been hasn't been made there are a million other ones of signals there's a whole bunch of extra signals most of which you will never use um, but they're there 
Um, click is obviously um, the thing you probably want to do with a button. So I think I'm about ready to go um, with this simple application. I've got my label one, my button one, and my window and so forth. Now I need to save it. All right, and I'm saving it on my desktop into Glade Cookbook Part 1. That's my record my desktop session. Now, I don't forget to give it a name, so I'll just call it Part 1. All right, and I click Save. And there it's uh, hopefully been saved. Um, it's from a previous session. Okay. Um, uh, there's, there's this unsaved one from a previous session where I made a mistake. Um, let me... Um, is it still there? No, it's been deleted. Um, okay, so um, let's just clear and start fresh. What's in there? Um, well, it's still showing unsaved one dot glade. That's the uh, oh because it's got a squiggle at the end of it, therefore it's hidden. It was uh, the squiggles at the end are are temporary files being used by Glade. They're the uh, the same equivalent of the dot swp files for um, for vi and so forth. Um, Anyway, don't worry about it. You can you can see it if you go to it and explore. If you go to hit Control H, there it is, unsaved one. Um, let's delete it. That should not be the current one. The current one should be Part One Glade Squiggle. Okay, uh, that's the current one that I'm playing with now. I'll go back over here. Um, do an LS again. You can see I've already written code, Part One dot C and Part One dash bin. They've already been written. Um, the part one dot glade squiggle is the um, is is the backup, as it were, for glade uh, for the current session. Part one dot glade is the actual thing I wrote. That was when I clicked save up there. That's what got written. What's in it? You ask. Um, it's an XML file. It's an XML file describing what your screen is looking like. At the very top here, we've got a window named window uh, and some stuff. And then we've got fixed named fix one and some stuff. And then we have a child, which is a button, and it says where to put it. And we also have another child called label, and it says where to put it, what type of font to use, and all that stuff. And um, that's what it is. It's, a, it's an XML file. Um, it's an XML file describing your window, your GUI. So that's what I that's what I'm working with. Now I have written a program, um, and it's part one dot C. You don't want to see me typing extempore, but here we go. Uh, first thing you need is there's a bunch of comments there. It's GNU and all that stuff. Is you need um, you don't need that as it turns out. I meant to remove that. Uh, a bunch of includes std lib types dot h um, so forth and so on. Don't forget the GTK. And they're important, obviously. Those are the uh, .h files. I'm writing in C. This is all going to be done in C. If you want to go to C++, just make it confusing, and it'll be C++. Um, uh, the problem with a lot of C++ code, uh, it tends to look like, uh, look, my no hands. It, it becomes magic. Everyone hides the uh, subroutines, and nobody puts any documentation in. And um, most C++ is impossible to decode. Um, it doesn't have to be that way, but that's the way people write it. Okay. Um, the main program begins here, obviously, and we are picking up any arguments from the command line, which is what that is. All right, what are these? Um, we have to have pointers. Uh, what's going to be created when we create the window, when we create the fixed container, when we create the button, we could drain the label, is going to create data structures, and we're going to get pointers to those data structures. Uh, so we need pointers. Um, GTK has a lot of data types. It has a GTK window, a GTK button, a GTK fixed, a GTK label, and on and on and on. The generic pointer is GTK widget. Everything is a widget. So you'll normally see most of these things often declared simply as GTK widget, although actually they're not. I mean, they, they yes, they are widgets, but they're widgets plus. No. So the window will be the type of widget that describes how to put together a window. It'll have the parameters for the window and so forth. We don't need to look at those. We may have to cast these things back and forth into the correct data type for a function, but they, um, but we don't have to worry about the actual contents of the data structure. So those are the, um, I've used the same names that I used in the Glade background. 
I don't have to, but I did. Um, these are not uh, these are not one for one. So the fact that I called the container fixed one, I do not have to call the pointer fixed one, but I did. Okay, there is further down. I have to use the word fixed one exactly, but this isn't it. Builder is part of the process uh, is a pointer to um, um, th that is used in connection with loading the XML file. All right, all right. So we've got uh, main standard first line of a C program. Um, notice I made these all global, so they're going to be available to all the subroutines. Maybe it's not the best practice, but it works. Um, it works fine, as a matter of fact. First of all, you call gtk underscore init and pass down to it the parameters that came in through the uh, function main. Uh, that's in case the command line had some gtk specific parameters to it. <coughs> Could, and it won't in my case, but uh, that's what you do. And it's, it initializes gtk and any parameters that were passed on the command line that it recognizes it will use in the process of uh, of initializing just put it in as is don't worry about it um okay here's where we start accessing the xml file um we said builder which is a pointer it's a pointer to a widget gtk widget um and th there's the first gtk function well it's not the first gtk init's the first but gtk builder new from file what it does is it goes out and reads that Glade file, which is really an XML file. You put the name of the file, your Glade file, in there, part1.glade. That's what it's called. That's what I wrote out. Could have a different name, whatever you're doing, but it'll be something or other .glade. It's an XML file, which, by the way, you can edit if you really want to make a mess, because if you mess up the edit, everything's going to go screw um, a mess. But, um, yeah, you can actually edit that file if you want to. Preferably not while G Glade is still running, but anyway. Uh, because then you'll have multiple copies of the same thing. Okay, so I get a pointer back to a structure which uh, contains the XML file or a digested H XML file. I don't know what it's actually doing there. It might just be a pointer to the XML file itself, or it's more likely it's uh, digested the file and uh, read it in and the built data structures, probably. Anyway, whatever it's done, I've got a pointer to it. Okay, now we start, now we start building the widgets. Window equals now um gtk builder object here is uh is being is being cast to be a widget i don't know what it actually returns i'd have to look it up but this is a cast so whoever's coming back here is going to be cast as a widget why because window was a window is a widget um the, you get a lot of these casts you don't have to worry about them too much they all look like this it's capital gtk underscore capital whatever the type is and the type here is widget. The function we're calling is GTK builder get object. And we pass to it the pointer builder. And we pass to it the name of the thing in the XML file that we want to connect to. Let me make this on top here. Um, okay, so if I go, so I can bring it up here. In other words, uh, this ID window is this guy. All right this and this line up so when i call this it uses this word to find this data structure or find the information associated with the window and it uh, returns me a pointer to uh, i assume it's a data structure that i don't know they don't tell me but i assume it's a large data structure which contains the information necessary to build a window this has not built the window this just as the the window will be created when we actually um um, well, you see it a couple lines down, show window. Uh, all right, so uh, I've connected to the window. This is a callback. Um, normally, you don't have to worry about callbacks, but the main window itself, you do. Um, what it's telling here, it's telling GTK, or it's telling your desktop, really, um, that when window is destroyed, do a callback. That uh, Well, this is actually a cast as well. Uh, do a callback to GTK main quit. Okay, <clears throat> so when you when someone clicks the X in the upper uh, right hand corner or some other button which it generates a destroy signal, <coughs> uh, the destroy signal is, will not be caught by your program but will be passed to GTK main quit. It's a built in function and it will destroy the window and release the resources. The null means there's no additional um, parameters on the line. 
Um, so that's pretty much a standard thing. Uh, you want to catch, you want the destroy signal to be um, to be passed to GTK main uh, quit. You may not want to. You may want to capture it yourself, then pass it to uh, to GTK main quit. We'll see that later. But at the moment, I just wanted to die. I don't want to participate in the death ritual. Um, so I'm not going to ask for the signal to come to me. I'm asking for the signal to go to GTK. If you fail to put this in and you kill the window by clicking X, the window will disappear, but the program will keep running. So don't forget to put it in. All right. This sets, uh, what's this doing here? It is, uh, it's another GTK function. And you're passing down builder, which is a, the pointer to the XML file or the digested XML file. It is going to build a table of all the callbacks. It's going to build a table of all of the signals and all of the functions they're supposed to call. And we only got one. Uh, if you click the button, it's going to call on button one clicked. So, uh, but in a large program, I have another program which, I don't know, it has several hundred callbacks, several hundred objects on the screen, widgets on the screen. So can, there's a lot of signals. And this builds the table uh, that identifies which signals go to whom. Don't have to worry about it. This is nice. This is where you have to write code if you don't use Glade. <clears throat> In a non-Glade version of this, you would be writing signal line after signal line, doing your callbacks, doing the connections. All right. Um, these will be dynamically c uh, connected to when the program is running, but it's building a table of them. Next of all is I do the get the pointers for the various objects actually in the in the window. First of all, I get the uh, pointer for fixed one, which is the container. <coughs> I don't actually use the container. This probably could be um, left off, but it's nice to put it in. And again, fixed one here, this fixed one corresponds to this fixed one. All right. Uh, the fact that I used the, had the same name for the pointer is irrelevant. You could call this fluffy. But this guy here has to, uh, this one over here in quotes, has to match up with that. That's what they're, how they're connecting. So that gets me a pointer to the data structure associated with effect. And again, you notice the casting in here. There'll be a lot of these casts around um, in, in a typical program. Because um, we are in C, we're not in C++. And it is, it is a C program. Everything underneath here is C. Uh, there's where I could connect to the button. Um, the name again, button one, corresponds to this button one up here. They have to have the same name. Gets the data structure to this, which also tells it what to ha what's going to happen when you click it. Um, and then this the label tells it where it is and all that stuff. So I have this is where you, this is where Glade really saves you a lot of time. It's built all the widgets, and it's done all the callbacks. You are ready to go. So you tell uh, the system that you want the window to be visible. Hello, show the window. And then you call GTK main. This, this is what's going to sit there. GTK main is going to sit there and watch, and watch for signals, watch for events. And anytime it sees an event that belongs to somebody, it'll call that someone. When the program <coughs> finally quits and everything is all done, um, GTK main will return, and then your program exits. So that's your main program. This GTK main is where it spends all its time. Now GTK main will call you the callbacks, call your functions, but they have. To, but that's how they. That's how your program will run. Okay, so we have one callback, uh, and here it is down here. Um, generally, they you know, most of them are void data type. Not all, but uh, void is typical for more, for clicked. So on button one clicked. Uh, you will get only one parameter. That's all I set it up for. And it's it's a GTK button. And it's a pointer. So I just call it star B. Of course, it's a pointer to this button up here. We know that, of course. But it will be a pointer to that button. It always it tells you which button it's, uh, or what object it's it's uh, is being is called. The callback is coming from. Um, okay, so I've got uh, so there there is a declaration of GTK button. Um, not GTK widget, because a button is a widget, but nonetheless, it's a button when it comes into the function. So the only thing I want to do is just um, change the text in the label. I could do a million other things. Um, 
I could shut the computer down. I mean, any, anything that's, that's legal, of course, in a C program, you could, you could do at this point. But all I really want to do is just change the label. And I use the function gdk label set text. Not all these underscores. The uh, function names can get really long and <coughs> easy to mistype, but there you are. Now, the first thing it wants is, of course, the label that you're going to change. Well, the label is technically defined as a widget, so you have to cast it as a gtk label. No big deal. Um, so there's another cast, gtk underscore label. Um, so it's casting label one, which is a widget, to be a label, which it actually really is. So no big deal. Second parameter, what, you wanna, what do you want to put there? What do you want to have go in the label? Um, there is a data type in gtk called gcare. It's the same as care, okay? But uh, so you didn't really need this, but I just put it in. It's a cast. It's casting what would be care star, const care star um, uh, of a low world into a const G, uh, pointer to g care, okay? So I, basically, it does the same thing. Um, regular care pointer as opposed to a g care pointer. I don't know of any difference. There's probably some, but I don't know what it is. All right, so there's the program. Not very long. How long is the program? The program is uh, 75 lines long. And don't forget, most of it was probably up the top here in the in the comments. So I will, um, um, I must have changed something. Um, so get out of it. Now I have already um, in here, uh, there is a, a, a script to compile. Compiling, um, there's a lot of parameters to the compile. Um, you notice the pound sign um, exclamation point or bang slash bin slash bash um, GCC. This tells me I don't want to see certain these d dash W no uh, minimizes warnings. You can leave them in or put them out. I don't care. But um, there's a couple of them here. There's, otherwise, you get a lot of weird warnings sometimes. Most, and of course, they're meaningless. Um, the output file name will be, uh, the executable will be part one dash bin dash o part one dash bin. So that's what the executable file is going to be named. You can change it. Um, you can actually parameterize this, of course. Uh, the input file is part one dot c. And we get past all this. And then the, uh, the library references. Library references are coming from here, which is a program, which is going to execute p package dash config. And it's got some parameters and tells you what's going to config and it's going to run and it's going to return the the flags that are necessary to compile a gtk 3.0 um, program uh, it will you notice the backslash um the, excuse me the back quote here right after at before p, uh, p and you'll see the other one here in a bash script something that's contained within back quotes, the result of execution will replace the figure within the quotes. So what this what GCC is going to see is dash LM, bunch of flags. Flags are coming from that program. <coughs> you may need to adjust this, uh, the name here as appropriate to whatever version is on your system. But um, yeah, that's how it works. You could actually individually type in the flags, but that's how it's normally done. Uh, dash export dynamic. Uh, that's where you run into trouble if you try to run this under Windows, but because uh, Windows Linker doesn't provide this, the uh, the table from from you can run you can run applications um, GTK applications on Windows. Uh, it is possible, uh, not very easy, but it can be done. The uh, but it doesn't have dynamic linking. Um, what is hap what's that, What is actually going on because of the Glade? Glade is setting up a table of callbacks. These were not known during compilation and during linkage edit. They, so they are brought in as a result of the XML file. So the program starts, it doesn't know about any of the callbacks. Oh, the callback functions are there, but it doesn't know who's calling them or anything. Uh, so this is a dynamic uh, callback situation, and that's handled by Linux. It's not handled by Windows. At least I don't know how to handle it in Windows. 
So that export dynamic is, uh, is necessary. If you manually write your GTK with all of the functions you do yourself, the callbacks will be established in your code. There'll be no XML file. So in Windows, that would work. But um, <clears throat> you can actually do it in Glade and then manually insert them. There's a way around it, it which is irrelevant. We're not in Windows anyway. So there is the compile script. Uh, I will try to put these um, in the comments section, uh, and so you can just copy and paste them. Okay, so we run them. Okay, well, um, first of all, uh, you'll notice uh, compile script is read, write, execute by user up here, RWX. All right, um, you get it to be executable, chmod uh, user plus x um, compile.script. That didn't change anything, of course, because mine's already executable. It has to be executable for um, for the script to run. Um, Compile.script, and it did it. And now um, we should be able to say, I'm not using, but you probably have to say dot slash play, oh, excuse me, part one. Uh, I don't, I've changed it. I've added the current directory to my path, but um, there it is. There's my window. Well, this guy is uh, always on top, so I'll get him away out of here. <coughs> and there is the window. Hello, there's my button. Um, there's the tooltip. Click me. See if the other tooltip pops up here. Yeah, there it is. I'm a libel. Uh, the label is hiding someplace down here. We, it's in this general vicinity. Uh, if I get over it, the tooltip will pop up. There it is. But it's hidden. I mean, it's not hidden. It's there. It's just out of any content, so it's not visible. All right. So if I click it, what's going to happen? If I click it, the callback will go to that function. The function will put something in the label. There you go. Notice that the it got a little bit bigger too because the text was uh, uh, was more than it, it than was anticipated when I when I um, put the label up here. The uh, the actual text that got uh, got inserted was too big for that area, so it um, it enlarged it and it shrunk everything. And so it it does some dynamic uh, shaping and so forth. But there you are. If I click it again, of course, nothing's going to happen. It's already there. But there we've done it. I mean, it's proof of principle. You start off with Glade. <clears throat> it generates the XML file. You write a program. You read in the XML file. You write your callback uh, routines. And um, you compile it. And it's ready to go. So if I click this, that'll uh, kill it. And uh, hopefully everything uh, worked. We'll try some more complicated stuff in the next couple of videos.